Good evening and welcome to another edition of The Advocate with Albert Apkarian, where we talk to politicians, talk to entertainers, sports uh, personalities. Uh, today we have uh, two special guests uh, that you will hear about more and more and more often. Some of you have already heard about them. Uh, we have with, uh, with us Sebak Ohanian and Natalie Kasabian. Welcome, mm -hmm. welcome to our show and thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. Thank, thank you. you, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, great. this is exciting. Uh, well, you're here because of a brand new movie and we're gonna talk about that movie in a little while. Uh, I'm very excited to go and see it. I can't even wait. I've seen the uh, previews and they're just incredible. Incredible, 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone, all the critics are just raving about it <laughs> everywhere. So congratulations first Thank of all, you. to both of Very you. Exciting. Um, before we get started, we always ask our, uh, our uh, guests to tell us a little bit about their background. So could you, uh, Seba, could you tell us sure. a little bit about your background? Totally, I was born in Germany and my parents moved me to America, to LA when I was four months old. So I grew up in LA my whole life, um, you know, I've always, been very keen on education. I was a member of Home and Men Arad Scouts for 10 years. It was a very formative part for me. And I just had a passion to become a filmmaker. And even though I didn't necessarily have the family connections growing up, thanks to the Armenian community, I was able to kind of start pursuing film in a real way because I made a movie 10 years ago that kind of launched my career. Which and was called? My, my movie was called My Big Fat Armenian Family. I'm sure your viewers Classic. have seen, seen the videos Classic. and clips of it on YouTube. I basically made a mo an entire movie with my friends, with my dad's home video camera, or my budget was $800. I, I wrote the movie, I directed it, I shot it, I edited. I did everything on the movie except for makeup, and then the makeup artist quit, so I, I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> basically, you know, we made this little movie that was about Armenian parents and, and like their Americanized kids and that culture clash. And thanks to the amazing Armenian community, everyone showed up, bought tickets, bought DVDs, and as a result of that, it empowered me to pursue filmmaking, and I went to USC Film School where I studied how to learn, and where I actually met Natalie. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's talk to Natalie about that. First of all, your, your parents are Parskai from oh, Iran? Yes, from Parskai. Okay. I oh, know, we're gonna get into We're gonna get into that Parskai. Parskai, uh, Parskai, Parskai, Parskai. are better than what Natalie Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll duke it out later. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, yes, I was uh, born in L.A., born and raised in L.A. Uh, my parents came here via Australia, actually, Sydney, wow. Australia. Um, and, original, and, and before that, they before were... Before that, Amman, Jordan, and Jerusalem. Wow. Yeah, and they, wow. they met in Sydney. Uh, but yeah, like Savak, growing up, you know, didn't really have anyone in the industry, but was just obsessed with filmmaking. I made my dad get me a video camera at 10 years old and just would shoot you know, videos of my little sister and cut them together. <laughs> right. um, and uh, went on to do it at USC uh, as an undergrad actually, Sev was grad. And I actually met Sev because of the ASA, wow. at the Armenian Students Association. So they had this career night one night where they invited alumni to come back and speak to the current students that I was about to graduate. And uh, they brought in Sevak to speak to the film students and I was pretty much the only film student who was also Armenian. <laughs> was like, imagine this, it's like the ASA room, there's every table was a table for different careers. There was a table for lawyers, there was 20 students yeah. around it. There was a table for- like real estate. For, for real estate, school. 50 students, of doctors, 100 students. And there was one table for film, it was one, one student, it was Natalie. <laughs> and, and I wasn't even it able to- It was destiny, to, see, it was that yeah. destiny for you guys to meet. And it was funny because I was barely even able to sit down with him because I was also hosting the event. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, long story short, we finally got to chat and he was so excited because he had just written a script with uh, Anish actually who directed Searching, but it wasn't Searching, it was another project. It was my first script that I was very proud of it. Yeah, yeah and he just what was like- it, What was that called? It, it was called Animal Heist, but no, don't worry about that one. So, <laughs> listen, so I'm really proud of the script. I go, I'm telling Natalie, like, hey, do you want to hear my pitch? So I, start, I started pitching Natalie the story. You're just like dying to I'm like, tell her I started pitching story. this happens, and then that happens, and that happens, and then halfway through the pitch- I just cut him off, and I was like, I know how this story ends, and I pitched him the rest of the story. Oh. And he was, was like, like, you're right. How did, did you talk to like, <laughs> how, I was so surprised that A, she understood the story that we had written and B, that she even had the courage to just do that. <laughs> and I was like, I want to work with her. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we just, we kind of realized that we, you know, shared a sensibility in terms of story and the rest is history, as they say. That's just to just to not leave this in the, in the background. You guys are boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes, now. we are. We're okay. both producing partners and we're partners in life. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. It's awesome. You know, it's a it's a good story for the young young members, uh, young people who love movie. Love. Uh, I know one of my uh, son's friends just is obsessed with movies, 
to see a story like that, that you can make it from going from just loving movies yeah. into producing and writing a large movie like Searching as, as you've done. So with that, let's jump right into Searching. Okay. And yeah. then we'll go into something, a few other things that I want to talk to you guys cool. about. Okay, Searching is awesome. This is our, you know, we've made a bunch of movies together and separate for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Searching is the biggest one. And the way it came together is Anish, who's our director and my writing partner, he and I had a meeting with a Russian company and they had made, because the, the, uh, we should talk about what Searching is. Yeah, we should first plant that. Okay, so, so do you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a feature film and uh, it's being released by Sony Pictures, but we actually made it independently, so we'll jump back into that. But it's a, it's a story, it's about a father who's looking for his missing teenage daughter and the way he has to go about looking for clues to find her is by breaking into her laptop computer. And along the way, he finds out, you know, a lot more about his teenage daughter than he maybe would have liked to. So it's a thriller. Or, or that, that, that he didn't know. Or that he, exactly. exactly, exactly. And the crazy part about the movie is the entire thing takes place on laptops. So you're watching it like you're watching somebody on their computer. That is so I know that sounds crazy, yeah. <laughs> but Anish and I had a meeting three years ago with this Russian company who had made a similar movie that had made so much money around the world. And they wanted to make more movies like that. And they offered us a chance to pitch them a short movie. We pitched them this idea as a short movie. Just like an eight minute like short, eight minute short, short minute. film. Yeah. And then, because we didn't want to make a whole movie on a computer screen, it sounds crazy. They brought us into the meeting and they said, hey guys, we love this idea, mm -hmm. we don't want to make it. We'll give you guys a million dollars to make it as a movie. Sevok, you can produce it, and you can direct it. You guys can write it, you can bring on Natalie to produce it, we'll pay for it, what do you say? And Anish said no. In the room, he said no. I was like going, I was going crazy. And if you crazy. know Sev, you, you know that he's was, probably like, he was just coming off of I was going, was to, going to probably, probably take, take a niche out, oh, out yeah. in, the, in the street and beat the oh, crap yeah, out of him. Oh yeah, trust me. Well, it's, it, like, it's very hard to get your first, you know, just for context, it's so, so hard to get your first feature film done and they're like here, you yeah. know? So I told them dollars. a niche yeah. means no problem, that's what he said, <laughs> and we'll, we'll get, get back, back to you. you. And when Anish and I thought about it, and we finally found a way to tell the story in a way that would be really emotional. The movie has an opening yeah. five minutes that I guarantee you will make you cry, Albert. If you see yeah. the movie and you don't cry, I'll pay for your ticket. Wow. Let me know. And, wow. we, and then we brought on Natalie, we came up with a way to make the movie, we put together a whole team of people that were all young people that we went to school with. A bunch of people from USC. Everyone's from a different background. We have a Guatemalan, we have a Colombian, yeah. we have Vietnamese, like it's our, Anisha's Indian, like we kind of look like the model United Nations whenever yeah. we yeah. walk around together. <laughs> And you know, we, we made the movie and we got into Sundance, which is the best film festival in America. And it, Sundance was just a crazy experience because, I mean, we knew we had made something good and we were very proud of the film, but you know, to take it to Sundance and then we, we premiered on a Sunday night, which is a really good time slot, yeah. pack theater, most crazy screening of our lives. I think just seeing people react to the movie. I mean, people literally, like you know how people say, sit at the edge of your seat. Yeah. We were literally looking at people and they're just like, gasping yeah. and and totally like feeling every beat of the movie so. and then we sold the movie that night well i guess technically morning well what it's a it dream like? come true because you hope that one studio will want to buy your movie yeah. yeah if you're really lucky two studios will want to buy the movie because you know you, you, you negotiate team, yeah. yeah we had 10 studios trying to buy this movie we were up from 6 p.m after the movie to 6 30 a.m the next all morning. night negotiating with our lawyers and our agents and luckily we ended up with Sony. A who, small company. A little tiny buy. company <laughs> called Sony, exactly. And we won a couple of awards at Sundance. We yeah. got the Audience Award, we got a, a Scientist Award and they even gave me the Producer Award of Sundance this year. Yeah, it's I, was, been, I, was just, I was just looking at that. I, I read that you uh, won the um, what is it? Sundance Institute Amazon Studio Producers Award. Which is a very, very, very prestigious award. So congratulations Thank you. for that. Thank that's you. that's not so that definitely needs to be mentioned with the whole title, not just a <laughs> producer's Thank award. So congratulations. Well, tell that to Anish three years ago when he said no to this podcast. <laughs> like, dude, like, come on, try not to let us win awards. That's why you guys co, -co wrote this and co-produced <laughs> exactly. it this way. Um, um, but yeah, so we're just excited yeah. because the movie's gonna be in every theater in America on Friday. Okay. And, we'll and be the date of Friday is September? Uh, August, August 31st, 31st, baby. Yeah. August and, the cr 31st. and the crazy part is, it's not going to be just America. No. It's playing in every country in the world, including a little country called... Armenia. Armenia. We're it'll, so excited. It'll be in Yerevan September yeah. 27th. Yep. 
which is which is just mind crazy. mind blowing to us. You it's guys so uh, don't believe. First of all, when you said if you don't cry in the first five minutes, I'll buy your ticket. If you talk to my wife or talk to all my friends, they'll tell you I, I cry the first ten seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, you don't have to worry about buying me a ticket. Great. I promise you that I'll be crying we'll, we'll in that movie the first the first first minute or minute and a half of that movie. Um, <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, uh, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a quick break? Sure. sure. We come back and we'll go ahead and talk about your casting decisions in this yeah. movie and talk about a few other things. So, so um, we'll be right back uh, in about two minutes after a few commercials. Welcome back again, uh, uh, The Advocate with Albert Apkarian. We have with us Seba Kohanian and Natalie Kasabian. We talked about the background. We talked about how you guys met, which gives an inspiration to every ASA student <laughs> have to find their, their mate. Uh, every, the ASA meetings are going to be packed from now on, I promise you. Uh, everyone's oh, going to go to an ASA meeting or some kind of a dance. Um, talking about, you know, I know uh, uh, John Cho as as just a uh, Kumar and uh, <laughs> yeah, Harold and Kumar, Harold yeah. Kumar I mean, movies and they continuously he was funny just entertaining everyone has seen them yeah. uh, casting decision of having him as a main role and to tell you I've read all of the critics I've read all, everything about the movie nothing but just incredible he's amazing incredible he's amazing. Uh, reviews on him and on your movie and I'm not saying it because you're here the reason I called you is because I read the crit uh, critical, uh, all awesome. the critics and read Rotten Tomato. Look at all of the reviews and <laughs> it is incredible. Congratulations. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the casting decisions. Yeah, I mean, I think for all of us, myself, Sev, and Anish, our director who's Indian American, we all had one thing in common, which was growing up, we loved, you know, big Hollywood movies. We all grew up on those, but we never really saw people that looked like us or like anything but but white to be honest and so when i remember when seven niche first started writing i remember we were having all these conversations about you know why not make the the family the kim family in this case diverse and, and why not have an asian american we, we hardly see that in in hollywood movies so that was something that was important to us from day one yeah that's great and 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 first time you actually uh screened it in la was that the asian Pacific. That's right. Yeah, uh, the Asian uh, festival. Yeah, yeah. yes, and, and that festival was was where you actually came out and you did yeah. it. And they were doing an interview with you, and you said, "Well, you know, the movie is about an Asian American family. I don't know why we wouldn't have it any any other well, location." Yeah, well, that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. This movie is about a family. It's like they happen to be Asian, and they don't have to be Asian. We just we're trying. You know, there are movies that should be made that are about representation and diversity. This is not one of them. We want it, We want one day for American movies to just have feature Indians and Asians and Armenians and not being a big deal. This is, I think, yeah. the first step for us. And you know, we, we're developing a movie that we're going to do two movies from now that's going to have an Armenian lead actor. And it's going to be not a big deal. Like Every time somebody would ask us, why does it have to be Asian, our only response was, why not? Why not Asian? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's part of, the, part of the fabric of the community anyway. Exactly. So exactly. We are, we're all one. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, how you, how, you know, it always amazes me how co-writers write something. Uh, tell me a little bit about your, the ups and downs. Talk yeah, to me totally. about the downs first and then tell me about the ups. <laughs> start with, start oh, with the low. <laughs> well, what's funny is like, you know, so Anish and I write together. We like to call it, we don't actually write together. We write against each other. Mm. But what that means is like, I will have an idea for a scene that I really believe in and he'll have another idea that he believes in and we'll just keep fighting. I'll be like, well, your idea is not good because of this reason, and he says, your idea sucks, and we'll just spend a whole week like talking about whose idea is the best and, and not, and usually one of us wins, and the best idea always wins. So because we have that kind of relationship yeah. together, it actually ends up making the best decisions always come through. Um, and we and kind of a, we kind of apply that to everything we do as a team. Everything, you know, yeah. it's really there's no egos, and it's really whoever has the best idea and can make the best case for it, whatever's best for the movie. Yeah, yeah, we're very lucky that our whole team is very collaborative, and like nobody nobody cares. It's like we all we're all fighting, but we're fighting for the best movie. For the movie, yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, how does that translate into a relationship where both parties do have have? creative, artistic uh, views on different things. Great question, Natalie. How does it? How does it? 
Um, you know, like the story where you heard me cut him off and, and pitch the rest of the story. We honestly, we, we tend to, and even with Anish, the three of us tend to be pretty aligned creatively. But I think there's just such a respect, you know, between the three of us, not, not just us two, because we really make decisions as a team. And we hear each other out. And sometimes he loses and sometimes I lose. I don't usually lose I too much. I tend to win more. <laughs> no, that's not what I remember. No. Okay, okay. I mean, it's a lot of like in the in our industry, it's actually not uncommon for you know husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend teams to exist. Yeah. Right. A lot yeah. of famous directors produce it with their wives or vice versa. I think it's probably a side effect of just our careers tend to, like our jobs tend to be so all consuming. We're just yeah. always busy. Might yeah. as well be busy together. You know and what I mean? I, and I'd say like you know, and, and we're lucky in the sense that. Our job is also our passion, and our passion is also our hobby. And so the the line between life and, and work is already somewhat blurred. <laughs> blurred. And why not jump into that adventure together? Especially, yeah. I mean, I was resistant at first. Yeah, she didn't want to do. She didn't want to work with me. The first time we worked together, Sev was on a on a project and, and needed some help, and I was like, I don't think we should, you know, cross that mm -hmm. line. And then we worked together, and we were like, oh, we just we communicate so well, we understand yeah. each other creatively so why why fight you know it? what's funny our first movie we did which was in savannah georgia we worked it was a 30-day shoot or something halfway through the movie one of the guys came up to me and said hey like do you have a crush on natalie <laughs> i was like oh yeah i'm dating her he's like i had no idea like he just saw me looking at her and thought we were just i liked her but yeah we you had that sparkle in your eyes when you were looking a, at her yeah. crush yeah um, exactly let me um, talk to you guys about, for first of all, the movie's coming out on August 31st. August 31st in theaters everywhere, everywhere. in America. Go yeah. see it, especially at the Americana. Uh, <laughs> and uh, especially in the Americana, I will promise you it will be packed. Yeah. I will promise you because the, the, the reviews have been just incredible. Well, can I, can I give a message to the Armenian Please. community specifically? This movie stars John Cho and Deborah Messing, and it's about an Asian American family, but we wouldn't have been doing our job as Armenian producers if we didn't include Armenians in the movie. And we actually have a very key Armenian character in the movie. And we brought a clip today. I don't know if you guys can show it today. We're going to, we're going to show that clip, actually. Tell me a little bit about the clip. Okay, so this is, so this is early in the movie. Uh, John Cho playing David doesn't know where his daughter is. So he realizes, oh my God, she's probably in her piano lessons. And it's been a long time since he's been you know, talking to the piano teacher. He opens up his email to find who the, you know, where the piano teacher is, and we see her flyer. And the piano teacher's name is... Vartui Shahinian, Mrs. Shahinian. And the picture that we used is actually my own mom's picture. That's beautiful. Um, but the, the voice, voice is of Sylvia Manassian, who is she's the founder of the ARPA International Film yeah. Festival. Yeah. She's been a big supporter to me in several years. Yeah, she's a years. huge philanthropist and has always helped the Armenian community, especially in the arts. And we asked her to do the yeah. movie as a favor. She's not an actress. And Sylvia will do anything for any young Armenians. And she said yes. But the one thing is, <laughs> she didn't want to accept any money. And we, we, we had to pay her, like legally we had to pay her. She was like, just give it to charity. We're like, Sylvia, we have this, it's a SAG production. Yeah, no, you, you, can, you can give it to charity then, right? <laughs> yeah. After, yeah, turn around and give it to a charity. So yeah, so the clip hopefully is kind of a cool example of what the movie looks like. Well, we'll, we'll include the clip at the, before we actually end the, end the show. We'll okay, actually cool, awesome. include the clip so everyone could see what, it, what the show is plus, plus the actual uh, trailer. Um, tell me what your next project is and what you, you have planned next. Cool. Well, we can't say too much, but it's, a, it's another thriller that Sev wrote with Anish and we're producing together that we're hoping to shoot in Canada later this year. It's called Run. Um, and you want to explain what it's about, Sev? Yeah, I'll tell you. You know what? I'm just going to pitch the whole movie. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, you have one minute? I would okay, love it. Okay, here's the pitch for our next movie. It's a story about a teenage girl who's many things. She's excited. She's passionate. She has real love for science. She's many things, but one thing that she's not is healthy. Her whole life, she's had heart problems, lung problems, she can't breathe, and she can't use her legs. She uses a wheelchair to get around. She needs 24-7 medical attention just to stay alive. But luckily for her, her mom is there. Her mom gives her medicine, does her training, does her homeschooling. Together, they make the life as, as good as they can. It's not perfect, but it's good. Daughter's about to be 17. She wants to apply to college, wants to get independence, maybe meet a boyfriend. Everything's fine until one day the daughter finds something, and it changes her life because this something makes her realize She's not sick. She's never been sick. Something's been keeping her sick, and that something is her mom. So mm -hmm. this is a story like a Hitchcock movie where she has to understand, is her mom actually doing this? And once she finds out, can she escape? 
Hmm. So it's that's a, a that's a that one thing is the tease that you you you're going to leave leave oh, yeah. alone until oh, yeah. we get the rest of it. Exactly, yeah. isn't that beautiful? And Natalie's going to Canada tomorrow or on Wednesday. Yeah, TBD. <laughs> to go TBD, and, TBD. and start finding her to locations go, yeah, with her director. Start looking around. All right, uh, great. Uh, again, thank you for coming down. We appreciate it. Every you are an inspiration to a younger generation of Armenians who are looking to go into the movies, and you're saying what, with what you've done, it is possible. We did it, anyone could do it. And for that, we want to thank you as Armenian Americans for, for coming up, putting your name. A lot of people cut their name to, from Ohanian to Oha or something like that, but yeah. you put your last no names in and you basically represented the Armenian community. And for that, we want to thank you and thank you for coming down to our, to our show. Oh, thank you. Thank this you was so fun. Thank, thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for uh, watching us. I'm sure we're going to hear uh, from Sebag and Natalie in the upcoming years. And they promised me, even if they win the Oscar, they're going to come back to my <laughs> show and do my show again. Yes, thank you. absolutely. Thank you again, and, and good night. Let's take a picture. One, two, three. <laughs>